what was your relationship with the office like throughout, um, maybe from beginning to end? I mean, were you ever actively, um, uh, you know, pushing for ideas for your own character and, and uh, ideas, or were you just accepting what was given to you? Um, it was different. There's different. There's different stages. Uh, <laughs> at one, like uh, yeah, because I, I had asked for my release for about three times, and then once I realized they weren't going to release me, I'm like, all right, well then we're not going to fire me. I might as well have some fun with it. So I would just like find ways to, to make the office uh, annoyed or, or get myself fired. Uh, that was kind of my way of entertainment because they weren't going to use me. So I'm like, kind of felt like, well, they're not going to use me. And you know, I don't want to just sit around. Uh, so that was kind of my goal, which, you know, looking back is very immature on my part, you know, and uh, kind of if I could go back, I'd do things differently. But that was kind of my entertainment those last couple of years. Was, <laughs> You know, it's just, just, you know, because you feel held hostage. You can't, you know, they're not going to use you. They won't let you go. What do you, you know, what do you do? You know, you got all this, you know, that was, was funny because I thought I had no passion, but it's actually just kind of the opposite. They're like, I always passion. I wanted, I, know, I didn't want to go out there and just do nothing or just sit around in the back. So it was very frustrating. But, uh, you know, I, sh- I should have found a better way to channel my, uh, my anger, my energy. <laughs> do, do you remember uh, one of the uh, examples of uh, where you sat down, rub your hands, went, this will really annoy him this evening when I do this. Uh, yeah, usually they'd, we'd have these talent meetings <laughs> and I would always just raise my hand and complain about something. <laughs> Even it could be the silliest thing. And I would just, you know, I just find a way to speak up and just, you know, just say something, say something, uh, what do you call it? Smart ass or, or just dumb. Just, I don't know. It was, it was weird. It was just, <laughs> it was in a weird place. <laughs> um, the other question I was going to ask you actually in sort of this vein was, how did you react the first time you were given verbiage, your your words uh, to say exactly on a script? So I imagine you didn't have that in Puerto Rico and you probably didn't have that in OVW either. Uh, yeah, luckily I don't have a great memory. So <laughs> I would just say like, man, I, you know, I can't remember all this. So I kind of just do the bullet points and go out there. And then, yeah, that's, that's one thing I can give them credit for. They never really, with um, that version, they, they let me do my own thing. They didn't really worry, you know what I mean? They didn't really give me any, they kind of trusted me to, to go out and do this. They say, like, here's your verbiage. And then uh, we do the rehearsal. I just read it. I'd read it verbatim, everything they said. And everyone, okay, you know, we go over it once and then that's it. And same thing with my matches. They didn't really interfere with uh, my matches too much. They kind of, I had liberty to kind of, you know, here and there they'd say, okay, well, you know, we can't do that or Vince is not high on that. But most of the time they didn't really mess with my, uh, my verbiage or, uh, or with my matches. Of course, you know, when they want to mess with it, they just take away my verbiage completely and then wouldn't let me talk. So <laughs> that's how you get me. <laughs> um, do you remember? Actually, this is going completely off what I've written here. But do you remember, like, through your uh, tenure there, referees uh, for, with with the earpiece would start feeding you information from the back? Would you start getting, like, instructions from the referees to do stuff here and there? Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes that would happen. Not much, but, yeah, sometimes they'd say, uh, you know, maybe if we were outside too long, hey, get, get back in the ring or... Or uh, I don't know. I, didn't, I remember the last time I went. Well, the last time I went for the rumble, I, I'm, I'm, I come in. I'm doing my entrance, and the, the referee comes up to smile. I go, "What? A well, smile? They want you to smile." Like, oh, all right. So I just, I just started looking at, found a camera, and just started smiling for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> so they want, all right, I'll do it. <laughs> uh, you first asked for your release in 2007. What uh, precipitated you asking? In fact, actually, more more to the point, when do you start getting a bit unhappy being there, and why? Um, I'm trying to think what it was exactly. I don't know. It's just so long ago. I just remember that I could, I could see, you know, I've been in the business, you know, my whole life. You could see when uh, things are, are taking a downturn and they're not going to go in your favor. So I was trying to get out early before, uh, you know, before, uh, you know, things got, you know, things got worse. So, yeah, I realized, you know, okay, they're not going to use me. They're not because, you know, you can, but I'd, I'd always go around in the back, like asking, you know, the everybody, like, but nobody would tell me to my face what they're, their issue was with me. And that's, that's kind of what, what, what got me so angry. Like, yo, just tell me to my face. Mm. I go to the writers and whatever. What, what's, you know, what's, what's the deal with me? You know, they tell you, no, everything's fine, whatever. Like, okay, all right. Let's say <laughs> this before, whatever. So I was like, you know what, let me just, uh, what I want to do is, you know, cause I always, I always said it's, it's better just to go away and then come back. So my plan was always to go back, but I just, I wanted to, you know, get away, you know, get away while I still had a, a, a name and not burn any bridges and, you know, was the original plan, but you know, some sometimes things don't work out like that. <laughs> yeah, um, I've, 
a couple more slightly harder questions and I'll promise I'll get on the fun stuff again to sort of like close out the interview. But uh, I've got to ask, was Triple H ever an issue? Because obviously for all us fans, all we hear is glass ceiling, Triple H on top of it, everyone else is under. Is that sort of maybe blown out of proportion a little bit or was there some truth to it? I, I don't know. I can't speak on it. I'd always heard, you know, secondhand that, that you know, stuff that he didn't like me and all this stuff. But to my face, he was always cool. You know what I mean? I'd never had a bad uh, itch. So I can't. I only judge people by, you know, I can't judge people by secondhand stuff. I can only judge them by how I interact with them. And I, you know, and I'd hurt stuff, but he was always cool to me. So, they, you know, they always people ask me about dirt on him and stuff, whatever. So I don't know. He's always cool. All I can say is he's always cool to me. Yeah. So I, 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 I generally don't know. So, I mean, that's why, I, that's always why I ask. I, I think when people ask you stuff like this, they've got a preconceived notion. I'm always happy to hold my hand up and say, you tell me. So I've, I wasn't yeah, there. I, I don't know. But like I said, like, you know, I can only judge him by how he was with me. He was always yeah. cool to my face. Uh, was uh, Shawn Michaels as cool as well? Because obviously he always gets the rap of, uh, you know, in the 90s he was, he was a nightmare, or but 2000s he was a change man. I res- yeah, I respected Shawn Michaels because he, I think he was one of the only ones that told me in our face he, he didn't like me. <laughs> and, you know, as, you know I, could, I, could, I, could res- I could respect that. No, we had a talk and he told me whatever, you know what, I could, I could totally respect that. You know, I'm not, I don't pretend to be everybody's cup of tea, but I like it. But, you know, you tell me, I like, instead of behind your back, just tell me right to my face. I mean, I respect, that's what I had. A, after that, like I had a lot of respect for uh, for Shawn Michaels. I had no idea about that. What what, what was his issue with it? Uh, I forgot what it was. So it was the same story. I think everybody else, I don't know, he felt like uh, I was too nonchalant or I didn't care enough or whatever. Or I was, you know, I was just too, uh, my mind on other things and then wrestling and stuff like that. I was like, all right. 